Everyone's Game Cola Faithful, and welcome to the Game Cola Podcast. This is podcast number 124, and as always, I am your host and podcast commander, Joseph Martin. I'm Alex Jedrasek, your uh, Jedder in chief. I'm James Polster, your James in something. <laughs> Uh, and welcome to the Game Cola Podcast. It's time once again for us to sit in front of our computers and talk about what else but videos games. I like videos games. Do you like videos games? Actually, I was guys? just I was just gonna say that uh, you're video James because you do hey. uh, <laughs> primarily videos. Hey, you're right. All right, there we go. But yes, I do like the videos game. Mm-hmm. Jetty Joe's James. That sounds like video games, and that's the entire joke that I just <laughs> had in my brain. <laughs> but don't... Good... Jetty Joe's James. Wow. Jetty yeah. Joe's James. Jetty We're going to talk James. about Jetty Joe's James <laughs> on right, this there episode we go. of the James <laughs> Jetty Joe cast. We need to. We need to. We need to move on. Um, let me check my notes. Oh yeah, Mega Man. That's a good thing to segue into whenever. Um, if you listen to the last podcast. You know that I was getting hyped to watch the new Mega Man TV show that was coming out on the Cartoon Network app, and I and I did watch it. I did I did that because why would I not? Yeah. So There's Joe, I have ten... a quick question. Okay, ask that question. I thought we were going to talk about video games. You're talking about a TV show. Mega Man is a TV show, video game TV on the TV <laughs> video. So it's fine. It's about video games. It's close Lay enough. off, it, it's James. Vi- it's video. You got the video part right. They they make video game jokes probably. Um, everything's, probably. There's lots of pi- yeah. No, I I just have to remember. There's there's like pixel art. Um, he plays he plays a video game in it in one episode. Oh yeah, you talked about which, that. I think so. Okay, real quick. Uh, just to to let you know the things I was very wrong about. Um. Mega Man is a robot named Aki. Uh, his, the fact that he's a robot is not a secret. The fact that he is a superhero is a secret from Dr. Light, but not really. Because um, everyone's like, why does Dr. Light not know that the robot he built can turn into a superhero? And if you read some of the press release stuff, they say, they say in it, like, no, he knows. He just pretends not to know for some reason. <laughs> Because for some reason, Mega Man thinks he doesn't know, but he does. And it's just never really addressed in the show. It's odd, but I guess it's fine. I'm sure at some point they'll do like an origin story episode. But I did, I watched it and it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it ranges from good to okay, episode to episode. There was only one episode that I didn't like, which was the, the last one on the app, the Air Man episode, just cause it kind of, it just kind of meandered. Um, and defeat him. <laughs> well, actually, he does defeat him. Oh. But he defeats Airman, and then like he it, he like drops him off, and it, like he blasts Airman, and Airman lands in front of the police station. What? And there's like these cardboard cutouts of robots, and Mega Man's like, "Oh, they take they'll take care of it." And it's like it's very clearly cardboard cutouts. Like I get that that's the joke, but also it's very clearly that thing. He's terrible he at being... Like, he's fighting for justice. Unfortunately, he doesn't do a very good job. And then he just leaves. <laughs> Mega Man is secretly working for the enemy. But but I, I I will say that they do use the the idea where, like, when Mega Man copies an ability, he gains something from the... Like, something else along with the ability. So, like, with Fireman, it was, like, you know, anger control. <laughs> Um, with Drill Man, it was embarrassment, which made, Uh, definitely made the trailer make a lot more sense. I cut out a whole section where I was complaining about, like, why is Mega Man acting so embarrassed in this clip? And it's because, oh, because he he copied embarrassment from Drill Man, which, like, hmm, when I say it, it sounds really stupid. But for some reason, when I watched it, they did something that made me come a little bit on board with it. I was a little bit on board. It just sounds like, like a, it, an after-school special from the 90s, like a tender and poignant episode of Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, I can't remember right now, but they, like, kind of made it work. Because it, like, it kind of lets them explore the, like, cheesiness aspect without it being, without Mega Man, like... Because aside from that, if they wanted to do an episode where Mega Man was embarrassed, he'd have to, like, ha- have mood swings. Because that's <laughs> so not what his character is like in the rest of the show. So it, they make it work. 
Um, and like, and I do appreciate that, like, that he keeps all of the powers that he gets, um, and uses them in later episodes. He's had to deal with the fireman anger thing, like, when he's used fireman's weapon. He's had to, like, deal, continue dealing with that outside of just that one episode. Yeah. Which makes me think that hopefully they'll, they'll keep that as, like, a cost to using any given ability. Uh, some of the other ones don't have anything, uh, as far as I know. They didn't, like, he either copied the powers at the end of the episode... <laughs> So it didn't really matter. Or did they just didn't have one, I guess. Other things. Oh yeah, there's a kid who is named Bert Wiley. And he's supposed to, he's supposed to be Albert Wiley, but a kid, but he's not evil. I don't know what's up with that. So why is he there? He's like, so it's just like another kid friend of Mega Man, Aki. Yeah. But like in like one of the first episodes, no, in the first one of the first episodes that features him, he's like he built a hair cutting robot, but it went bad. And like he's wearing a hat and then like he takes the hat off and he's like got a bald spot exactly like Dr. <laughs> Wiley did. And like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Mega Man Fully Charged, which is the name of the show. What are you trying to communicate here? Because I don't understand. Is this just a reference? Is, am I supposed to look into this more? <laughs> we haven't met this child's family. Is his dad like Dr. Wiley? It's very, the, the yeah. whole setting is kind of like alternate universe in the same way that like Battle Network was. And the, I, I talk about this in the article that I'm writing that's going to be more comprehensive. But like it sort of uses thematic elements from all the different Mega Man games. So like there was a war in the past that was kind of like the elf wars in the zero games and then there there you know the world is like humans and robots trying to coexist which is kind of like mega man x sort of style thing dr light is like a warrior war veteran so he's like dr light is like buff which is a weird thing <laughs> um he's like he's old but he's also buff um, <laughs> but he, so he's just, he's just big. It's, it's, but like, I mean, it's, it's different, but it's not just because it's different doesn't mean it's bad. So, oh, the other, the other thing is Mega Mini, who is very different from what he was in the what? original trailer. So there's a little robot guy that lives in Mega Man's head. Yeah, you and, can talk about that guy. And in the, in the, when it was originally shown, he had his like nerdy voice and he's like, it's Mega time. And then they and were like, like oh, oh no, that's terrible. Yeah. So now he's like he sounds he's basically like not not the actual man himself, but like the internet's conception of Danny DeVito <laughs> is how I would describe it. Like what? he's like, Kid, kid, you gotta calm down, kid. <laughs> what is this? Suddenly and turning they, into what what is it, inside out or whatever? And and they banter, and I mean, it works sometimes, honestly. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does. But, like, the whole thing, I will say, I'll, I'll sort of wrap things up. Everything in this show, at the very least, has potential. There's nothing in the setting and the setup of the show where I'm like, they can't make this work. This is always going to be an issue for the show. The setting sets things up well. They've got, like, a good foundation with the first couple of episodes set, so they can expand it. Anything that I've had a problem with personally it's not something that like can't be improved as time goes on there's always growing pains with stuff like this so i'm hopeful that the show will continue to improve even if the most recent episode was my least favorite just because like nothing really meant anything like Mega Man got super like when he took air man's powers he got like overconfident and then like eh, he became a blowhard yeah um, and he became overconfident and, like, decided to run against his friend in the election because he had become overconfident. Wait, there's just, like, a, the, wait, what is this about it was, like, an election? School, it was, like, a, it was a school election. Oh. Oh, okay. I um, thought I was, like, Mega Man is running for president? What? And he was, a, he you know, he was being a real butt about it. But, like, it, it didn't really, it didn't feel, it was just, like, he's just acting like this because of the Air Man thing, like. It's not like a moment of character growth for him. He is being brainwashed into behaving a certain way. And then he just stops at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and then the episode resolves. And so that, that one I was just like, that's not particularly engaging. 
And the episode just kind of dragged. I was trying to search for pictures of Dr. Light <laughs> in Mega Man Fully Charged, and I came across this. Oh. I actually, uh, what? 20 of sexiest, unforgettable 90s cartoon characters. Mega Man, <laughs> Mega Man. Which from... one? The one on the left or the one on the right? Both. <laughs> the, no, positions one and two on the list. Yeah. Mega Man <laughs> from Captain N. Stupid face. And Mega Man Ruby Spears. <laughs> Mega Man dirt face. I think. Gosh. Did anyone like Captain N? <laughs> Like, did people like that show, or did everyone hate it? I, Cause, like, I watched I only... it after the fact, and I thought it was kind of cool, but, like, I only watched, like, two episodes. I remember being, like, obsessed with it as a kid, but that's to say I remember very little about it in actuality. Like, I remember it existing, and I have these, like, these memories of being like, oh, man, I want to watch that show, it's so cool, but that I tried watching, like, the first half of one episode, and I was like, no. No, <laughs> this has not aged well. I mean, to be fair, a lot of 90s cartoons didn't age well. Yeah. The Super Mario Brothers Super Show, for instance. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's a lot of things wrong with it. You need to just open your eyes. It was cool at the time, but now if you watch it, it's just, oh, no. That's Mama Luigi to you. <laughs> That was the Super Mario World show, which is a completely different kind of weird. <laughs> but yeah, still, still, still very like like for instance, the original Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Toad's mushroom cap is just a hat. <laughs> he's actually just bald underneath. Yeah, he has. No, he's like... got like two little hairs. Yeah. yeah no. See this, this again. Either way, that's not the important part. The important part is <laughs> is it's a hat. What the heck? It would have been a lot funnier if you were just like, oh, 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 yeah, that makes it okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he has two little hairs. It's fine. Um, I, for a long time, did not know that those were different shows. I thought they were separate seasons of the same show. I mean, they're basically the same. It's just like they, they were separate shows, but I think it might have been the same studio that did it. Hmm. They look very similar, they, but yeah, the voices are different. Similar. They have the same voices, I think. No, I think they have different voices. Oh, no, you're right. Well, I don't know if they have the same voice for Mario. I think they might have had the same voice for Luigi, though. Maybe, but uh, I think they also didn't have the live action segments. Yeah, yeah, I know they got rid of that. But I, I, video game cartoons. You'd think you think they would have nailed it, but so far the only well, you cartoon... think they nailed. You think they would have nailed movie movie based games. That I can understand not working as well because, like, like I feel like it's much easier to turn something like a video game into something episodic and lighthearted than a movie where, like, you have to have, like, if you're going to make a film out of something... You have to add so much content to it. There's got to be some kind of stakes, and it has to, that, those stakes have to last for an hour. Yeah, yeah, whereas with games, they have to last for many hours. Sonic is just, I, I don't know if Sonic's good at it or they're just like, they just by sheer numbers, right? Like, Sonic has had like five TV shows. I mean, the Sonic Boom show was doing pretty darn well. Like, that was one's it? actually really well done. Well, uh, sorry, was it popular? <laughs> it was my was my question. I don't, I don't, I, I've, I have watched it. More popular than the game. <laughs> that's not, that's not saying much, <laughs> Jameson. That is a very low bar. Jameson, okay. That you have that you have set for the show there. I mean, it's something. <laughs> Still better than Sonic 06. Yeah, I mean the the Pac Man TV show was terrible. Did I ever tell you about the Pac Man TV? Not the oh, not yeah, the yeah, old yeah. one. No, you, you talked I about the don't like know the if new I want to one. learn. Like uh what was it? Well, I was possessed. The the new one. Yeah, like uh has the girl wearing socks and she has hair and glasses. Yeah. For some reason. Oh, and that's the one where, so there's like, there's two like side friend characters and they are so much the same character except one boy, other girl. Like that's the only, that is literally the only differentiating thing between them. So much that so often they just say the exact same thing. At the same time. I mean, to be fair, there's, there's not much differentiating Pac-Man from Miss Pac-Man, so... No, I just hey, mean... she has a bow. I, and yeah. a mole. 
they don't they like talk to each other and i'm sure they act slightly differently and they don't just speak in unison as a hive mind <laughs> it's really unsettling what is this an episode of hex and slash what other video game tv shows were there i'm trying to think of recent ones there was sonic boom there was the pac-man one there's the mega man one we could put it on its head Shows that tried to be about video games broadly. Those are never good. <laughs> Where they like make up a video game for the show and you're like, that's oh, not yeah. how... Sword Art Online. That's, that's not how any video games work. Sword Art Online, I, I haven't actually watched, so that might be an exception. Well, neither have I. I've just heard that it that it can be good, but it can also be total garbage. And, and, and depending on who you ask, it can be both. I'm thinking less about anime and thinking more about... Yeah, Western-like uh, shows. Yeah. More like live action, honestly. So many, and so many people try, and I'm like, it's live action. How is many, the worst. how many live action video game shows are there? I can think of at least three that happen. Jumanji is one, the new Jumanji, technically, <laughs> isn't it? I think it is. Yeah, I mean, they go into a video game. Um, and then there's well, there's sort Ready Player One isn't yeah. entirely. Mm that but you know but it's the same thing where they like make up a video game there's there was in disney xd they had a show called aaron stone where he was a video he like was a they like turned him into a video game character but he was in the real they like it was like one of the first when disney when toon disney turned into disney xd um which they tricked me by the way they kept being like oh there's this cool thing called disney xd and i was like oh okay they're gonna make a new channel and then like one day toon disney is just gone i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> that was never mentioned surprise but one of the first one of the flagship shows was a show called aaron stone and i'm trying to remember and i think what happened was there was a video game in the show and then they turned him into his video game character but like still in the real world but it was just like regular like it was the most generic like he had a bodysuit that like made him kind of strong but not like just like like someone who like you know works out but like not like superhuman strength and he had, i think the only other thing that i can remember is that he had a grappling hook <laughs> so he basically turned from normal dude into batman G kind of but like not 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 as cool as batman like not even in in the framework of the show would he have been as cool as Batman. Honestly, I think there's more live action video game stuff on YouTube, like in YouTube series, than there is on like actual mm -hmm. television. Yeah, because YouTube was a place where they did that all the time. Just stupid Mario Brothers comes to mind right away. <laughs> that was dude, yeah, that, that was, was my favorite series for the longest time mm -hmm. i watched that too but that that that's the kind of thing that i that like when generally somebody says live action video, video games or like video games like real life like that that's the first thing that comes to mind is that kind of thing yeah and, and i mean sure they were all really campy and really cheesy but like that was kind of that was okay that that was just what we expected from them like and we we were okay with it we kind of expected that and we liked it for what it was <laughs> yeah which i think might maybe that's what kind of why we used to like those old cartoons that we don't really like anymore is because we've kind of grown past <laughs> the 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 campiness and the the extreme cheesiness but like you know that that's just that's what they were and it's just you kind of grow out of it so you don't really appreciate the show as much for you don't look past the cheesiness anymore. You kind of, that's all you can see. Yeah, that's the thing. TV show, at least when I was watching TV, TV shows about video games always tried to be so serious about it. Like, always. Yeah, that was why I like Super Stupid Mario Brothers, is because, like, it, they, it ne well, it did take itself seriously, but they, it, like, it started out not taking itself seriously at all, and then they started putting a lot of plot elements into it, they really started building up the story and all that, and that was really cool. I liked it because they started out not serious. Instead of starting out super serious and just grabbing your attention, trying to grab your attention and failing because... You have no investment in this. If you start out silly, so you know it's going to be cheesy to some extent, and then they start building it up, I think that's what a lot of shows should do. And heck, maybe that's why the Sonic Boom show is doing, is getting such high praise, is because it doesn't take itself 
seriously. Yeah. Like, not at <laughs> all. That show is so fourth wall breaking and, like, so much meta humor in there. It's it's fantastic. I really think that's what makes some of these shows just do well with more audiences. Anyway, that was that was definitely a bit off topic. It's not it's still about video games, James. Yeah. <laughs> I just get worried. Video games really worried about who? I don't know. <laughs> Me. Gonna... I'm worried I'm getting off topic. You are currently with the two people who would have First of all, we don't run the podcast like this, but even if we did, you are with the two people who would be the ones to say, stop, we're off topic, <laughs> James. No, I think uh, like, no one's... I think that would be Nathaniel. He was always the one keeping people on track. And Nathaniel's been missing for 50 years, so like, <laughs> what are the odds that he's going to come out of hiding? And Nathaniel is not missing for 50 years. Nathaniel, um, Nathaniel released a video game a while back. Oh, yeah. The a free one. It was a Mega Man fan game Ojo. called Ojo, Ojo's. Yeah. With the exclamation... Ojo, no, sorry. You have to say it like... You have to say, Ojo's! You have yeah. to say Ojo's. it Ojo's! Like because there's an exclamation mark. Snakes! Um, it's... it's You play as Proto Man fighting a bunch of uh, Sniper Joe type enemies with the whole sort of conceit of the game being that like the Mega Man games and particularly fan games don't use those enemies very well. <laughs> Um, and so he's trying to make it, he tries to make a game that uses those enemies in interesting ways. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting and I had fun playing it. Um, and it's free. So you should, you should go look. I think it's, he just, re he either just released an update or he's working on an update. Yeah. I think there's Italian in the game now. Oh, that's yeah. the only thing that's been confirmed for the new update. He posted a picture of that like today or yesterday. Yeah. So you should check it out. It's yeah. It, I mean, it was, it was fun to play what more do you need from a video game it's made by nathaniel hoover for goodness sake yeah speaking of games that the staff has been working on i think paul and michael's pizza delivery boy yep saved the world i the articles i always mess up because they mess it up i've been listening to their podcast oh a podcast if you don't if, if, you, if you don't know um old game call staff members uh paul and michael i think paul is technically the Oh, a rock studios yeah like person yeah. he calls himself the head boy <laughs> so i don't know what that i don't know i can't translate that back <laughs> um and then michael writes for games um yeah but, but not not exclusively for oh rock but they have a podcast where they but talk yes, about um, the game development that so they do. speaking of uh games made by staff members that involve pizza hey jetty you gonna when's that next update for pizzerian coming out you know uh I think about it every once in a while. I think about, like, Pizzerian DX, like, for the uh, the Game Boy Color. I think uh, about Pizzerian 64. That one came up recently to make, uh, like, a... Yeah. No, I think about it. You need, but then, you need, that one needs a remaster. The graphics are just... Mm, yeah. They don't, they don't <laughs> new age super, well. New Super Pizzerian Wii. <laughs> hey, that game is criminally underrated, all right? Just because nobody got the Wii U... <laughs> it had the uh the tablet motion sensor functionality you made use of the touchpad well yeah just like how partners in time made use of the touch screen by having one mini game where you rub dirt off of an object <laughs> well uh it's like how uh ace attorney or yeah phoenix Wright, you could blow <laughs> dust off of fingerprints or whatever to make use of the microphone yeah but you could also like move around the evidence screen and like tap the screen to advance the dialogue could you also just yell like how does it decide whether or not you're blowing because i assume that it knows your detects whether or not you're blowing I, just by the microphone i don't know peaking. about the old i don't know about the ds games but i know that the the 3ds games from like actually analyzing the files uh the 3ds games actually have a speech recognition library in and so they can tell so that like the, the blowing. 3ds games actually do hear what you're saying and try to figure out what you're saying but like for blowing like i would what i would have all yeah. done if i were lazy would just be like oh if it's peaking yeah like for a certain amount of time and someone's blowing but then like couldn't you just be like ah! <laughs> yeah no you totally can <laughs> That, that it, it does, I know for a fact, because I did that in Ace, in the original, uh, in one of the Ace Attorney games, I literally yeah. just shouted into the mic, and it blew all of the dust away immediately. Wow. 
Now I'm just picturing Phoenix yelling at finger prints. See, that's actually what I did. See, what I did is I, I looked, I got my mouth really close to the mic, and I just went, dust, go away. And then it just, woof. And it works. Dust, go away. Yeah. Imagine how, like, you've got this really somber, like, police investigation into a murder, and it's like, wait, there's fingerprints. Ah! Guys, also, just a really important thing I just realized. The Nintendo Switch is doomed because there's no tagline for games on the Switch, right? We There's 64, yeah. there's Wii, there's U, uh, Super. Yeah, Super. So, yeah. What, Wii. what do you call? There's no, there's no, I yeah, think. Subset. Like, how are you going to know which Mario game this is when? Yeah. Yeah, they're, and, they're just gonna call everything deluxe. But they okay, but they already did that because like uh, Link's Awakening doesn't yeah. count because that was DX, not deluxe. And and um, Sonic Adventure Two. Sonic Adventure Two. Sonic Adventure Two didn't have a DX. That was Sonic Adventure DX. No, it had it. Sonic. No, Adventure no, 2 no. It was S. No, Sonic Adventure. No, Sonic Adventure had director's cut. Which is funny because the original Sonic Adventure was on the Dreamcast, which has an abbreviation of DC, and Director's Cut is also abbreviated to DC, despite the fact that the Director's Cut is the only version not available on Dreamcast. <laughs> does, does, does DX not stand for Director's Cut? No. What does it stand for? DX is, DX is shorthand for Deluxe. Oh, Actually, you know what, though? Well, yeah. <laughs> and, and Super Mario Bros. Deluxe doesn't count either because that wasn't a port. It was technically a new game. You know what was throwing me off? Because cut on a computer is yeah, Control X. X. Control X. Oh, yeah. I see where it is. So see that's why doing. I thought it was Director's Cut. All right. Um, here's Now, here's... Okay, here's the final challenge, guys. Pokemon XD. No, that's just a laughing emote. <laughs> I think it does stand for something. I thought it didn't. I I thought I looked that up and it didn't act. I'm looking that up right now. Nope. It is just it Pokemon did. XD. I can't possibly believe that. What does XD stand for? <laughs> someone someone on this Game Facts thing said that Pokemon XD stands for extra darkness. <laughs> hey, that's not wrong. <laughs> Pokemon, Extra Darkness, Gale of Darkness. Is this a real game? Wait, Poke did you not know Pokemon XD was a thing? I haven't ke kept up with Pokemon like all it's, the... It's a GameCube game. It has a very different what? battle system. Like, it has a kind... It, it, the battle system is kind of more like... It's it's very similar to, like, the Pokemon Coliseum. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Except it was like it was a single player game though. That's the weird thing is that it was like a Pokemon Coliseum, but in single player. Poke you're, are you thinking? Are you talking about Pokemon Stadium? No. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Of, Pokemon Stadium. Not Pokemon. there was a Pokemon Coliseum. I'm yeah. I got that makes it. Yeah, it's Pokemon. It's imagine Pokemon Stadium, except yeah. it's a single player campaign. It did have multiplayer functions, but it came out alongside. What was it, Gen 3? Yes. And it was like Pokemon Stadium, but the majority of the game was a big, long, story-based single-player campaign. And it, uh, from the looks of things, it, it was very edgy. It sounds kind of like Monster Rancher. <laughs> Like, uh, kind of. You So you didn't catch wild Pokemon for the most part. There was like a little thing where you could do that. But um, you would catch Pokemon by stealing shadow Pokemon from bad guys. That doesn't make any sense. Which is funny because that's the only time in Pokemon where stealing is, is required. <laughs> well, because, okay, the process of make... So a shadow Pokemon and Colosseum and Gale of Darkness is a Pokemon that has gone undergone some process which is usually considered abusive in some way, in a very, like, they never, like, specifically say. It's just, like, it's a bad thing to do to a Pokemon. Okay. Uh, it turns them into shadow type, and shadow type is super, the moves, shadow type moves are super effective against everything. Okay. The, the downside is, is that they can't level up mechanically. 
So, like, that's your incentive to, once you steal a Shadow Pokemon, to actually, like, go through the process to make it not a Shadow Pokemon anymore. But, so it means that replaying the game isn't fun, because you, ha you have to catch six Pokemon before you can start, like, doing anything custom. Which takes so long to get to in the game, because there's so, you're, all, you're limited to just the Shadow Pokemon that you can catch from people. Yeah. You have to get so far through the game before you can start mixing up the party. But I remember enjoying it when I first played it. But yeah, there, there were two GameCube games, and then they stopped doing it. Uh, they did. There was Battle Revolution, which was actually... It's like Battle Revolution was more like a sequel to the stadium games. Because <laughs> it was just like a bunch of battles. There wasn't really a plot. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's actually how it's classified on Bulbapedia, is Battle Revolution is in the Stadium series. And so, then they made a fighting game. Yeah. Oh, also, just to confirm, the XD does not stand for anything, because that XD is the same in all languages. So, in Japanese, I mean, French, German, Italian, and Spanish, it's just all XD, which if it stood for something, that would be really, like, weird. I mean, unless they just didn't translate that part of the abbreviate or like, I mean, they, they would don't have to not translate though. the abbreviation, which is like, I guess they could do that for Japanese, but I don't think they usually do that for other languages. No, the, I don't think they usually translate abbreviations like FIFA is abbreviation comes from the French yeah. version. But yeah, but that's because FIFA is like an actual like trademark name or something. XD is not. It could have been. What if it had been insanely popular? You didn't think that they had their contingency plan? Well, you you can't um, trademark everyone, XD. You can't everyone trademark here, XD. I just want to say that everyone on this on this Game Facts post is very adamant that it is either extra darkness or extreme darkness. <laughs> See, those are both very edgy names, and it does indeed fit with the look of the game. So, I think I'm going to... So, um, you can say that if you want, but there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever that that XD stands hey. for anything. Hey, James, can't prove a negative. Bam. <laughs> Yeah, so Debate cast yeah, yeah, so the whole point is you're supposed to, Joe, you've just undone yourself. You can't prove a negative, so therefore you need to prove the positive. You need to prove that it yeah, does stand for something. I have it. I will link you this game facts post. Sure. And I will say I will take one look at that and say I would like a better citation. There are at least three people who agree with me on the internet. How many people agree with <laughs> you on the internet, James? I How don't many? need anyone to agree with me because you can't prove a negative. Exactly. So you are you're you automatically lose the argument. No, it doesn't. It means, anyway, doesn't on. it means that everyone moving who doesn't on. say that it stands for something agrees that it doesn't stand for something. Therefore, it's the entirety of the internet minus three versus three. <laughs> Therefore, I win. Now so, that I've won the argument, let's move on to fan mail. Well, I was going to say, I did always like that um, XNA, which is the like programming language for Xbox Live indie games. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was official that it stood for XNA's not an acronym. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like GNU. It, it's like the GNU Foundation. It's GNU's not Unix. It's a, recurs <laughs> it's a recursive abbreviation. Yeah. So do we have fan mail? Um, we have a fan mail. A oh, fan but mail? first, <laughs> I gotta just read the name, the German name for Pokemon X XD. Pokemon XD, Der Dunkelsturm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And also the French name has Souffle in it. Wow. <laughs> Les Souffle de, de ten, 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 I, I suck at French. <laughs> That's an interesting name. <laughs> Wait, where, where, send me the link, I'll pronounce it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, just, I'm just gonna screenshot. Le souffle de... I assume that's just the word for storm, but it just looks like it says souffle. I guess yeah. it would have an, uh, it doesn't have an accent on the E, though. Yeah, it would have an accent. <laughs> Dunkles. <laughs> the Dunkle Storm. See, I told you, Der Dunkle Sturm. <laughs> probably, I mean, it's German, so it's probably Sturm. Der Dunkle Sturm. Um, anyway, let's, let's read fan mail. Let's, let's go Good to fan idea. mail. So this fan mail comes from Game Cola Superfan, uh, McBall, uh, who, by their own admission in this, in this email, this is the first time McBall has written in, so thanks, McBall. 
Hey. We're glad that you... We always love questions from fans. And you sent this in, like, just late enough last time that we didn't have it for the previous podcast. So it has <laughs> been a month. I'm sorry. We did get it. It was just... A, you sent it in just a little bit too late. Anyway, here's, here's, the, here's the email. Hey there, Game Cola Podcasters. McBall here. How is everything going? That's the first question, I guess. How is everything going, guys? Oh, pretty good, Going Thanks. pretty good. Playing some video games. Doing some podcasting. <laughs> Uh, failing at editing videos because, ah. She goes on to say, I have been a fan of the podcasts for like ever and haven't sent a single letter until now. See, I was, I, I was right. I, I wasn't lying to you before. Uh, I've either just been too nervous or couldn't think of a single question. Without further ado, here are my questions. I'm going to skip the first one because it is specifically aimed at newer members of the Game Cola staff. Of which none are here. <laughs> we had some. I had some people originally scheduled, but plans fell through. It's fine. Um, so we'll save that one, McBall, and you can be. Your question can be on another podcast. Here's here's uh the second one. If you somehow got a million dollars, either through legal or illegal ways, what would you do with it? Would you spend it on video games or a robot butler or something else? I'll do. I will spend it on a robot butler that would buy video games for me wow bam blew your mind <laughs> i would probably uh... a, I, I would spend it all on like getting rare like rare video games or like <laughs> so... I, I would totally go for the whole cutting room floor route and like buy up all the like beta or like unfinished <laughs> prototypes i could find yeah because i find that stuff really cool james you'd saying you'd buy a single copy of earthbound <laughs> <laughs> no that's that there's plenty of people have that game there's there's plenty of games out there that are far far less well known what is the most expensive like nintendo world game? championships yeah that would be it the gold one right uh, like, yeah there's a, oh yeah nintendo world Ch uh, for those who don't know, uh, Nintendo World Championships were these carts that were like, there was like the first like Nintendo, like bring everyone in, everybody plays a bunch of Nintendo games. Yeah, and it was from an event points. of the same name. They, they were originally mm -hmm. released on great cartridges because they were just meant to be in the units that the gamers would play at the event. They were never meant to be publicly distributed. They were just meant to be there, you know, to stick in the console and hidden out of sight. But then one of the prizes later on was the winner would get, like, a gold cartridge of, you know, the Nintendo World Championships game software on there. And so that one is extremely rare because there are obviously far fewer of them made because there are obviously far fewer winners than people who were playing the games, like, in their cases. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it also is important to mention that uh, the games themselves are just, like, demos of nes games like <laughs> you can only play them for like 30 seconds or whatever time limit there it is like the games that you play it's not a good game to play which makes it a great collector's item because you don't feel bad for not playing it because it's not a good game like if they sold the game i mean it's part of it's part of multiple good games they're just dumbed down and you can only play them for like a minute so like no <laughs> how much does it cost what is it nintendo world yeah nintendo Championship. world championships Let's see. Uh, ooh. Well, you could get a cup. You could get a couple. Um, it's about. It's over. Um, tenth of a, it, it's a hundred thousand dollars on this one. I'm reading <laughs> that one of the gold cartridges. Uh, the other. Okay. The, these are just. These are just thirty. Th I got a thirty thousand for this one. Yeah. Some of. Well, recent. this was. Yeah. So the. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. Most of them are usually around like twenty thousand, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. So how much would it cost to buy all of them? We don't know how many there are. <laughs> well. You could you so you could buy, let's let's say on average big number averaging that it's twenty five thousand. Uh, so one million divided by twenty five thousand. You could buy forty copies of Nintendo World Championship, and then you resell them at an inflated price, and you'd make even more millions. And that's called investment. <laughs> so um, for me. I would spend it, uh, I would open a video game studio. I would start making games. You gotta spend money to make money. <laughs> yeah. 
you could you could just buy a studio probably <laughs> like you an could existing just, one that already makes games yeah. like like and, and you could still make it and then you just to like cut out the time right like yeah. just so that you could immediately get going on making games <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how much it costs to buy but like you could probably get like i'm sure that like you know Small time. big companies like i mean when like you know in this past e3 like xbox talked about like all these different studios that they bought and i i'm sure that the deals were like i'm sure that some of them were under a million dollars yeah <laughs> but i i mean that's it's a solid plan yeah <laughs> the other question that we can that we can answer with our particular cast is has there ever been something in a video game you really wanted to be canon or something that you really wish wasn't <laughs> I mean, if it's in the video game, why would it not be ca canon? Well, no, but they're saying that it was just like a stupid idea. Like, why did they do that? Or why did that happen? Why did that character die? Like, why did, like, a story development that you wish didn't happen because now they have to, like, now it's in the canon forever. Yeah, I feel like there are, but it's been so I'm long. Gonna, <laughs> I, I will speak vicarious. I will use, let the vicarious blood of Game Cola speak through me. And probably say Hobo Phoenix <laughs> would be one that a lot of people would like to have never have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he didn't he didn't lose his badge. It was all a bad dream. Yeah. I wish Mega Man 8 hadn't, like, could just not have existed. Like, the plot. Well, I mean. No, just the voice acting. I, I, not, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't delete it. Just like, the from voice existence. acting. Just get rid of the whole voice mm. acting. No, the plot's also dumb. It's not just the voice acting. It's not as bad as Mega Man X6. I haven't played that, but I would be inclined. Well, the thing about Mega Man 8 is that, like, Mega Man 7 set up, like, this idea of, like, a con like a first of all, it sort of tried to establish a continuity between the games. Like, the games all had always been, like, continuous, but, like, there had never been, like, real references that much, just, like, characters that kept showing up after they showed up in one game. And Mega Man 7 was the first one where it's like, this is, it's six months after Mega Man 6, Wily is in prison because he was imprisoned in Mega Man 6, and we're going from that. And then it set up, like, this tone of, like, could, like, Mega Man tries to, sh says he's gonna shoot Dr. Wily with his plasma gun at the end, and Dr. Wily's like, you can't, and Mega Man's like, I can go against my programming, <laughs> and then he has to take one, I just didn't understand why that was something that they did. What do you, what do you mean? Like, why, what was, what was the point of that whole scene? The point was, I would have hoped, was to set up something in Mega Man 8. Because, like, what I would have thought the first time I played it would be like, oh, so they're going to set up this thing. It's like, it, did Mega Man hesitate because of, like, an own internal moral code? Because, like, you know, Mega Man's strong sense of justice, which is, like, a moral code, basically, is, like, his only character trait that has been, like, firmly established throughout the series. And so, like, was it he hesitated because of a moral code or was he actually unable well, to But fight? if he had his moral code, why would he, why would he even want to shoot him in the first place well like the idea of like he thinks he should but then you know he like a per like a person like might be like i'm gonna do it and then be like oh but now i actually have to like like my head is telling me to do it but my gut is telling me don't do it but why would his head tell him to do it because that's how people work <laughs> Like you have your yeah, logic I, I, and your This guy is an response. evil villain, therefore I should kill him and not just send him to jail. Because he's escaped so many. He escaped from jail. He's escaped so many times. Mega Man <laughs> let him go the first few times, so he probably feels kind of guilty about that. And so, like, the, it's a yeah, like there's like a logical idea behind it, and there's an emotional one, and it like set it up for that, and then it just doesn't follow through. And so you're right, James. It the whole scene becomes a complete non sequitur, and you're like. What was that all about? Because it's never followed up on in any way. Exactly the same as in, like, Mega Man X6, though. Like, that's actually very similar, because they set up this entire ending plot in X5, and it really made it seem like, oh, this might be the last game in the series, even. And then X6 comes along, and it's like, hey, guess what? What actually happened is none of the three possible endings that you could get, but rather a weird hybrid where nothing 
where we took all of the bad parts of each ending and combined them together, and then we also slightly retconned some of the stuff that happened in all three. So, ba like, I'm not kidding. Like, I, I, I can't tell you the specifics, but that's pretty much what happens in X6. The beginning of X6 is saying, hey, guess all that, remember all that stuff that happened in X5? Most of it didn't happen the way that you could have possibly seen it happen, no matter which ending you got. And also some of the stuff that always happened in X5, no matter what ending you got, didn't actually happen. Like, it's, yeah, that sounds... it's, it's dumb. Well, X5 was supposed to be the last game, I think, right? And then they were like, make more, Yes, though. it was. It was. And then X6 was just X6. He said, make more. And like, I mean, you're gonna pay me, so I guess. Yeah, I can, I can at least make a sort of attempt. Uh, Jetty, what... What what's something about that you don't want? Final Fantasy for the After Years, like the whole game, <laughs> the whole game, uh, not canon. Like, uh, I guess the thing is, is that like Final Fantasy four is kind of like it wasn't my first RPG. You know, like Dragon Warrior was my first RPG, but it's the one that really like settled me in on what the concept of an RPG was and how like they should be and that kind of thing. So then it's like, oh wow, you know, here we are years later, and they're coming out with like uh. You know, a continuation of the story. This is going to be... Uh, no, this is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> was that basically like... Like, I know that there's like Final Fantasy X-2. Was it basically Final Fantasy IV-2? Yeah. But like... It, it takes the existing characters. Like, Final Fantasies don't usually like, you know, 2, 3, 4, whatever. They, they don't follow from each game. But like, Final Fantasy IV, the after years, is... Uh, you know, Saved by the Bell, the college years. Um, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same characters. But then it's like, oh, but they had kids. And by the way, despite the fact that the kid is like 15, Kane is just coming off of the mountain, which means that Kane has been on Mount Ordeals for 15 years. Uh, and like, there's just all this stuff of like, oh, you know, despite the fact that everything was resolved in the game, it's coming back. For some reason, the moon that flew off is coming back. It's like, please, you could have done something here, and instead you're just like, remember all those bad guys from before? They're back. Like, uh... It was just, basically, it was all just a big excuse to... Yeah, it wasn't a continuation, it was just an excuse to be like, remember these guys who you liked? Yeah, it was See them a all again. Grab. It was just a yeah. nostalgia play. So it sounds like the, to to summarize the thing, <laughs> if you're gonna end, if you're gonna end the story, end it. Don't try to unend your story and follow up on plot points that you establish i think those are the our main concerns i'm glad that there was like a general theme that is actually a good this. point that like yeah all the things that we covered here are basically there is a way to continue a story just don't like either rip it apart or just like make a weird copy of it make it make sense even hobo phoenix right like yeah it was a weird way to make it so that it could be about apollo justice and it's like there were other ways you could have done that yeah like more than one lawyer can work at the same time <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean the later games kind of proved that um well they also need an excuse for why he doesn't know how to because in the second game isn't he just like ooh, i forgot, <laughs> forgot no, like, like the second ace attorney game like ever you mean yeah, that like in that, in that game he gets hit on the head with a fire extinguisher and gets amnesia. Oh, so that's why you have to do the tutorial again to be like, uh, yes, how do so I? So they present? actually have a legitimate reason. Okay, well, it it was a it was kind of a it was kind of a stretch, but at least they gave you a totally valid in universe reason <laughs> as to why you would need to do the tutorial. Yeah, you could just have a character who's like, "Hey, you need a refresher," and Phoenix could be like, "I don't need a refresher." And it's like, "Too bad, we're doing it." Yeah, anyway. that's what they do. That's what they do in the in the the later games. At least in Spirit of Justice, the most recent game, they can say, "Oh, hey, do you want me to give you a refresher?" And you can just say, "No." You can do. I'm, yeah, you can do it without severe head trauma. <laughs> uh, except for the for all the old game mechanics. For the new game mechanics, the tutorial is mandatory. Yeah, but for all of the returning game mechanics, uh, they you can they give you the option to skip, which I like because they they acknowledge finally that hey, you've probably played one of the other games by this point. Well, see what they could do is that if they're like you know how to do this right, you can either say yes and then you continue playing the game, or you say no and then a fire extinguisher falls off the wall, it hits you in the head. 
<laughs> Genius. I wish they did that in Pokemon. <laughs> hey, guys. Hello. Yes. What video games have you been playing in recent times? So, being that um, the end day is nigh, I've said for several years now that I was going to play through the Japanese version of Crystalis, and I've finally done it. The absolute uh, excuse madman. Excuse me, I believe you mean or Crystalis, depending on your <laughs> regional accent. That is yes. a mandatory <laughs> section of the title. It is non it is non-negotiable. Yeah. I apologize. Or, uh, depending on your regional language, uh, God Slayer uh, Sonata of the Distant Skies. Which is a way cooler name, let's be honest. It it also, okay, I never realized, like, when you start Crystalis, Crystalis, depending on your regional accent, when you open the game, it has, like, that cool, like, oh, there's the crystal sword in the center or whatever, but there's, like, a cool animation, like, they've got, like, this huge sword... And, like, vines grow up it, and it says God Slayer. Like, it's really far superior, like, uh, opening animation. They did the same thing with Mega Man uh, 6 on the NES. The Mega Man a a 6 on the NES actually had a really cool, like, sort of vertical, like, bleed animation as the title faded in. Yeah, no, the the, the point is is that I've finally been playing through that. I'm um about halfway through the actual translation part, so then I get to record commentary and edit a bunch of images, and edit the actual video. So hopefully I'll be able to get it done in the month that I have. You said you finished recording everything? Oh yeah, no, the, the game, um, I finished recording the game itself um, a few days ago, and then I've been going through each of the videos that I recorded and translating by hand each of the lines that I read. And then I actually uh, programmed the, the same little script that I made to make the... Uh, scrolling winner lists for the year-end awards um <laughs> i i basically like hacked that like i put the crystalis dialogue box background and then i put i replaced the regular font that i use with the crystalis font and so i can just type in here's the text so when i like put my translation it can be in like a little crystalis dialogue box um <laughs> so yeah like it, it's i'm about halfway through translating the videos so pretty neat. well i'm excited i'm excited to see it it'll be a good it'll be a fun end day celebration yeah i'm i appreciate that we've come up with something different every year yeah i've also appreciate that we have not circled back to have joseph play yeah it for 10 for hours 10 hours yes yeah. All these people doing are doing like these like oh I've reached this many Twitch subscribers so we're gonna like oh, yeah. we're gonna do a live stream all day I'm like yeah I wish we <laughs> I wish I had done it for I wish I'd played video games for ten hours for subscribers and not just because I was bad at the game. <laughs> Play that game, yeah. You play for that long because you want to, not because it just takes you that long to beat the game. Yeah. If, if please, for my aching heart, for the time that I spent, go on the Game Cola YouTube channel, GC.net. There's this video series where I cut each hour, each uh, yeah, cut it up each episode into an hour chunk, and you can you can watch it and over time. And when you're watching this, uh, in your the end day celebration, make sure to go onto uh twitter facebook you know your favorite social media platform and say hey here i am watching this game cola video about chrysalis <laughs> in celebration of the end day you can use hashtag the end day <laughs> we're not the we're not at housekeeping yet jetty <laughs> we still have to know what games that james has been playing in recent times yes tell us oh boys it my turn it is all right well i have been playing Two games mostly. I finally have a Nintendo Switch after lots of work. I finally have a Nintendo Switch, so I've been playing a ton of Breath of the Wild. And I'm probably like halfway through the game. And I think I have like uh, 50, 60 hours in it. It's a lot. There's a lot of video game in that video game. <laughs> yes, there is quite a lot. And I am absolutely loving it i love the game and i already saw somebody do a pretty much full let's play of the game a year before i got it and i still got it anyway and i'm still enjoying it massively so i say even if any of you have like seen someone else play it i highly encourage you to get the game anyway especially if you already have a nintendo switch it's just that good it's your playthrough will still just be that unique 
compared to anybody else you've seen. Like no nobody's playthrough is going to be exactly the same. And I really I really love that about it. There's just so much you can do. And you can even you can play it over like a different way too. Like you can do it without Yeah, you can set like challenges for yourself. You can try and get to Ganon faster. You can try and a hundred percent the game if you're absolutely insane or you know just do all sorts of things you can you can just do all of the dungeons in a completely different order like just to challenge yourself like you can do some of the perhaps the more complicated dungeons. do the hard ones first <laughs> i just you can do all sorts of really neat stuff it's just all entirely up to you and i love that the other game i have been playing a lot of is dead cells so I had heard about the game for a bit, so I just got it probably about a week and a half ago. I love it. I have tried some of the other like indie Metroidvania kind of style games, and I've tried some roguelikes uh, before, but I was never really able to get super far into them. And I'm still obviously only having the game for a week and a half, and now that I'm back in school, I haven't had a massive amount of time to dump into Dead Cells. But the the small amount of time I have played, I've gotten like, I think two or three of the permanent upgrades. I don't know how many there are total, but I've gotten, based on like the sort of completion room that they have right at the beginning, I am nowhere close to completing this game. And it, it was just a blast. Just when I first got the game, I spent probably five hours just playing it straight through, just keep just going through and through and through. And it's... It's a lot of fun. It, the combat and stuff takes a lot of getting used to. I still suck at dodge rolling, but I I am surprised and very happy at uh, how much I want to keep coming back to it. So can you can you give a brief synopsis of the game for anyone who isn't familiar with it? Because like Zelda and Mario and Phoenix Wright and Mega Man, I kind of expect our audience to be familiar with. But yeah, just in case someone doesn't know what Dead Cells is. Yeah, uh, so Dead Cells is, it's like a sort of roguelike or roguelite uh, Metroidvania style game. So basically, uh, your character is just this guy that can't die. He's just like these sort of cells that come down and possess this like dead body or something. And you run through these dungeons and you're traveling through like this castle, this massive, massive castle that changes every time you die. So every time you die in this game, you respawn at the very beginning, from the very starting room. But if you can get far enough, uh, you know, battling, you, you battle enemies, it's sort of like a hack and slash. Although you can choose to, like, dodge roll and just avoid enemies. And actually, there are certain doors in the different sections of the palace that actually require you to reach them within a certain amount of time, or else they close permanently. So, well, for, for that run, basically you just perform a bunch of runs through the castle, trying to get as far as you can, and at certain points in the castle, if you reach them, you get these permanent upgrades that allow you to explore different areas, so you can instead branch, instead of going from the dungeons to the castle courtyard into a forest and then into the rooftops, you could instead go from the dungeons to the sewers to a bridge to the castle rooftop. So you've got some branching paths once you've unlocked some of the permanent upgrades that let you kind of Super Metroid style, they, they allow you to access different areas. So even though you lose most of your progress when you die and you have to start over, you can still make slow but steady progress by getting these permanent upgrades. And also, uh, you know, as you play the game more and more, you'll get more used to the combat and you'll be able to just generally survive for longer and it's it's a lot of fun there's like 10 bajillion different weapons and 10 bajillion different skills you can equip to your character at uh at regular intervals to make your character stronger and you kind of have to pick and choose a sort of risk reward for how you want to upgrade your character you can try and synergize different weapons that have various special random effects uh, that you get as soon as you pick them up, and it's very, very in-depth. I think if I wanted to explain it all in full detail, it would take me an entire podcast, but it's a very in-depth game, and there's a lot to kind of figure out, but once you've kind of gotten the basics down, it's just something where it's a lot of fun to just jump in and play for a little while or for ages, and just it, it, you just kind of want to keep going. So, but that's basically my long-winded 
attempt at a short synopsis. <laughs> that sounds like an um, interesting game. It, it sounds is. like a good video game. It actually. Thanks for sharing. It does sound Once pretty I'm good. Once I'm able actually. to actually go into detail on the games I've been playing. Yes. <laughs> Um, for me, I, I haven't, I've just recently, um, moved into a new apartment in a new state. Um, so I haven't been playing a lot of video games, just the, the general stuff, you know, like the Stardew Valley farming game. Um, I've been thinking a lot about video games. Um, I'm currently in a class about, it's, it's about, um, thinking about video games. No, it's not thinking about video games, Jetty. Thank you for your very helpful input <laughs> into my brain space, Jetty. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, it's called um, it's it's basically a pathfinding course. Um, it's it's for yeah. like real world things, but like it's very applicable to video games. So it's making me think a lot about like pathfinding AI in games and stuff like that. But not not a whole lot of stuff that's particularly interesting to talk about on a podcast. Uh, hopefully, I will have played more games. I've got a list of games that I'm excited to play at some point. Um, there's Mega Man Eleven, the new Pokemon game, and the new Smash Brothers that are like on my list of like play these when they come out. But for right now, I'm just sort of waiting for those to come out. Um, so I think with that, it is uh, time for us to uh, wrap things up. So thank you for listening to this edition of the Game Cola podcast. If you like what you heard, please check us out on our actual internet website, GameCola.net, where you can find reviews, news posts, blog posts, any kind of article that strikes your fancy, you can find on our actual internet website. You can find a, uh, a an entire column where uh, Terrence draws uh, in MS Paint stuff that people searched for that landed them at Game Cola. Yeah, that's actually a very that I like that a lot. Yeah. Is there a new one? I, we, I need to ask Terrence if there's a new one coming out soon. Yeah, I, I think I think I'm... there's one uh, in the works that uh, they're in the middle of drawing, but uh, we're we're gonna see another one soon. It's supposed to be like a monthly thing, but uh, Terrence is often busy. We've also got the Secret of Mana RPG cast. Oh uh, yeah, mm-hmm. that needs to be recorded it, shortly. <laughs> <laughs> um if you uh if you like this podcast and you're interested in other podcasts that we do we do a rpg cast um where we take a video game and we set up uh its mechanics for like a tabletop setting right now we're doing uh the secret of mana so jetty is leading us um james plays the main character uh valor the guy with the sword i play the sh- sprite who forgets things and that's their main character trait um, if you, and Anna plays Harper, Anna, the, uh, the girl and, with yeah. the six pack. <laughs> yeah, she is very. Buff. Um, so check that out. Uh, if you want vi- uh, video content, you can find us on our uh, YouTube. The uh, channel name is, as mentioned before, gc.net. The letter G, the letter C, the word dot, the word net. You can find video series like Danganronpa and others. Crystalis playthroughs, multiple, multiple Crystalis playthroughs. <laughs> Lots yes. of different end day celebrations. Yes. Uh, you can also find us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, just search Go- Game Cola. You can find us on Twitter, uh, search Game Cola, and you'll find us. If you want to tweet about the podcast, how much you like it, how much you'd love to help your dear friends at the Game Cola podcast, you can tweet about the podcast using the hashtag the GCPC. And let us know. You can ask us questions through that medium. You can also ask us questions uh, through email. You can email us at podcast at gamecola.net, like Superfan McBall did, um, and have questions read out on the podcast and be fun discussion topics. Or you can just like you can just say hi. Like it doesn't have to be a, a question. You can just be like, I want to say things to Game Cola people, and you can do that with the power of the internet. Wow, technology wow. lets you do that. Yeah, it does. Uh, you can also, if you want to find live streams of us, uh, you can follow us on twitch.tv slash GameCola. We just recently did our HoHo Holiday Livecast Awards extravaganza, which will be, the VODs should be uploaded, both of the VODs will be uploaded to YouTube by the time this podcast comes out. Um, so you can check that out and uh, follow the channel for any other streams that we do in the future. Um, you can also check out the new Game Cola Discord channel. People like Discord these days, right? Oh, how do you how do how do you advertise a Discord channel? Uh, like, we probably can just include the link on the website or like yeah. put a, an invite link on the the post for the podcast. If you're in the car right now, if you're on the train or something, if you're listening to this while you're, you know, doing dishes, just remember, go back to your computer, look it up. 
<laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, we'll 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 find way. We'll post it around. I'll see if I can get Anna to put it in the uh, Twitter description. We will hack uh, we'll your phone ways. that you're listening to this on, <laughs> so that you get on. Do not the adjust your television set. There is nothing wrong with your picture. <laughs> um, but you can talk to us or other Game Cold fans about video game stuff, and we may, depending on how people use it, we can may, we'll maybe uh, source questions. Uh, maybe have little fan specials. I don't know. We haven't really used it for anything yet. So the sky is the limit. Wow. Plenty of possibilities. Uh, I want to thank Medio Xavier for the use of our theme. Uh, five is average. The beginning and ending of the podcast. That's what the that's what the song is. Uh, you can find that on his album uh mediocrity which i think is we were jenny and i were talking about like how do you pronounce like is it medio is it yeah I, i've always said mateo javier but i i don't think i don't think he has any uh you know pretenses that it's a real name <laughs> yeah um but the album is called uh mediocrity volume one that's meaty with a t so you can find the song that song on uh Bandcamp along with his other music uh you should go check it out i mean we've been using that game cola theme ever since we stopped michael from doing uh disney intros <laughs> to the podcast <laughs> oh, so yeah. we've got it's a it's a great song and it's named after one of game cola's founding tenants yeah so uh, you should you should check it out um that's all of the words that I have to talk today. Uh, thank you again for listening to the Game Cola podcast. Have a lovely time of day whenever it is that you're listening to this, and we will see you next month. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 I need to turn on the air conditioner. Yeah, me too. (laughs) (laughs) All right, there's our end roll. (laughs) Just, oh, it's so hot. Air conditioning, why must air conditioning be the bane of recording? It Uh, it was so beautiful for like a week last week. And then, yeah, I know, it was so uh, cool. I'm sweating. (laughs) I'm going to be right back. Are Are we done or? We're yeah, we're done. With the roast with the of Game Cola staff members. I'm gonna stop <laughs> recording.